I'm Brian Tuscan, host for Cop to Corporate. Our special guest today is Dan Coleman, and Dan's a former police investigator, detective, and he owns his own private investigation firm. And I asked him to come on the podcast so he could give his insights to any law enforcement officer that has a strong investigative background thinking about joining the ranks of the PI business and knowing the ins and outs, the good and bad, uh, no holds barred. We have Dan Coleman. So Dan, welcome to the Cop to Corporate podcast. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself, starting with your police career and then your transition to being an entrepreneur and starting your own investigative firm? Uh, certainly, Brian, thank you for having me. I'm really, uh, really happy to be here with you today. Um, a little bit about my background. I actually started working as, a, as an investigator in, in college as a private investigator. And for four years, I worked as a, as a PI and, and eventually ran the, the company. And I decided that to, to do the level of investigations that I wanted to, and I really wanted to be an investigator, I wanted to go into law enforcement. Um, so I um, went to a county agency in, in New Jersey, the county prosecutor's offices have county detectives that investigate the major crimes that occur in the county. Um, I was a county detective with the county of Morris, about a half million population. Uh, we had about a hundred investigators and then um, a number of uh, assistant prosecutors. And during my career in, in law enforcement, um, I was able to be uh, exposed to uh, a lot of different types of investigations and assigned to various units. Uh, including uh, being assigned full-time to the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force uh, for four years, uh, and really uh, was able to hone my uh, investigative skills um, while um, through um, you know, being exposed to, to uh, high-level investigations. Um, there was uh, some pension reform uh, that took place 2010, 2011, and um, I thought about uh, that I was, it affected me uh, financially. So I said, you know what, I, I think uh, I'm going to go back out into the private sector. And I decided to take early retirement, um, which means I retired uh, without medical and um, without my full pension. If I'd stayed five more years, I'd have medical and 15% uh, more of, of whatever salary I was at. And um, you know, people said, you know, wow, you're really taking a risk. And I said, I, I, I don't see it that way. I, I see an opportunity where I'm really at the, the top of my game in being able to conduct investigations. Uh, I was 45 years old and um, I wanted to build a good size investigative firm. So I really wanted to build a, a company. Uh, and so that was um, almost exactly 10 years ago that I retired and, and started uh, Creative Solutions uh, Investigative Services here in New Jersey. And we are the largest full service investigative firm in the state of New Jersey, and we're also licensed in, uh, in New York. That is impressive. And what's even more impressive is most police officers are very concerned about leaving and leaving pension or any money on the table or benefits. And for you to just know in your heart, it was time for you to go. That takes a lot of guts, but it also takes a lot of commitment and resolve to take that leap of faith. And one of the reasons I wanted you um, on the podcast, because there, there are tons of law enforcement professionals that uh, follow, my, follow me, and they might be on the fence right now thinking, do I stick it out another five years or 10 years? Do I take that leap of faith? And- there's always risk. There's always risk to anything that you do, uh, good or bad, And but you have to be ready to do it. So Dan, as you made that decision, conscious decision that I'm just going to take early retirement, uh, even though I don't have medical, but you're confident in your skills. What planning did you take uh, to embark on your new career? Did you just retire one day or did you like set things up before you pulled the plug? Well, it's funny. I things happen very quickly in the change in, in in pension reform, and I was reaching 
the 20 year mark where I could retire at 50%. So the decision was, was actually rather, rather quick. It was that I knew I wanted to start a, a company and the sooner I started, the sooner it would be um, hopefully uh, successful. And so I didn't know where it was going to go, but I knew that I wasn't afraid to work hard. I was willing and able to put everything into it. And I didn't feel that I could fail knowing that uh, I had time and energy and, uh, and commitment and, and I was gonna make it happen. So no, I didn't have any planning. Um, it just it just kind of fell into place um, by um, looking at the bigger picture and saying, all right, I want to build, build a big firm. What does that mean? What am I going to need when I am bigger? And uh, and that started me on the road to to preparing um, for a to to build a, a larger company. Well, for those out there that may not be business savvy, right? I mean, I'm not sure what your background. Uh, before law enforcement, but did you have a business background? Did you know how to build a, a business, business case, or did you just kind of learn along the way? And then also a lot of investigators on the uh, detectives or, or federal law enforcement, they all land with a firm uh, or a company and not actually start it. So if you could talk about both one, like working for your firm, what does that mean from a job security perspective? And then just someone going out on their own and starting from scratch. What 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 does that look like? Well, um, and and you really bring up a good point, Brian. <clears throat> Excuse me. That people go into government because they like having that um, security, and they make sacrifices being in government and giving up other opportunities. So it is, so it's not the nature of most people that work in government to be entrepreneurial, uh, especially after they've reached a certain period. My recommendation is, well, if, if you do have it in you and you believe you have it in you, you're in a much better position than, um, than other people in the private sector. You know, the people in government say, wow, you really took a big risk, Dan. And the people in the in the public sector say, man, I wish I had a pension at 45 and I didn't have to make a living for a few years while I built the company. They're envious of that. So it's looking at it from the, the two different uh, perspectives. Uh, and for me, it was something that I felt um, I have to do this. I have to pursue this or I will... I will. I won't be able to live with myself. So it was more about something I had to do than, oh, I want to do this and I want to make a lot of money. Oh, I I don't like my job, my career. I want to get out of it. It was I need to build the company. I need to prove to myself that I can do it and and pursue it. Um, so it it is, and and that is the transition of going into um, into uh, being an entrepreneur and leaving the comfort. Of government, in terms of to answer your your question, in terms of starting your own or going into a company, um, it's um, if you are going into another company and you're bringing those skill sets, you really need to bring with you something more than what other former law enforcement detectives or investigators have. Um, it could be bringing in a, a client or customers, bringing in um, some investing in some some equipment or tools, investing in yourself. Uh, if you want to um, build something like I did, then you need to kind of take your mind out of the um, out of kind of the government mindset and put it into a business minded mindset. So, and there's so many great resources out there. There's so many people that are willing to help you. You tap into those resources. Whenever I talk to somebody and they say, what are you doing? I have an investigations firm. Uh, and then I, I always ask, um, 
I was like, oh, have you ever started a, a company uh, yourself? Yeah, I started a whatever company. Okay, you understand what I'm what I'm going through. It, it's really a business thing that you're experiencing more than um, the, the, the specific nature of an investigative firm. Well, ha having that business passion and that entrepreneurial spirit, I think really propels people that have that burning desire to exceed and excel in something different from law enforcement. But you also brought up a great point of having that strong foundation of years of investigation, background and tenure, that now you go into the private sector and all of those tricks of the trades and the skills that you have really can help out clients. And my assumption, just knowing that I hire um, private investigators for the private sector uh, on the cor corporate side where I work at, uh, you always go back to the people that deliver. And, you know, and you don't go back to people that don't deliver. And so for someone that built such a successful firm like you, could you just give feedback to some of the listeners thinking of starting their own firm or working in the private sector? What what three nuggets of wisdom would you give uh, and, and invest, specific to the investigation uh, firms or or work? What 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 three pieces of advice would you give? Well, Brian, you bring up a great point, which is when we are in law enforcement, uh, we get paid no matter what the results we deliver. Um, we've all seen it. People that do uh, a great job get paid the same as, as people that do uh, a bad job. So the motivation comes from uh, within. So on the, on the private side, if you bring that mindset, that government law enforcement mindset of, hey, I did this work, I want to be paid, rather than being focused on a results-driven mindset, you're, you're, going to, you're going to fail. Um, and and so you you it's it's an interesting point when we get a phone call. Each case is so unique and challenging. How do I? The first thing I say is, can I accomplish this? And then, okay, how do I price it? And and there are times where they say, well, we really want you know this this and this. This is what I want to get. And I say, I, I don't think I can deliver that. Um, and even if the person has money and they say, you know, look, I'll pay anything. Um, they're ultimately going to be unhappy because they're paying for results. Uh, that's that's the bottom line. They they want results and they're willing to uh, and they're going to pay for it. If you don't get those results, they may be okay with it, but chances are they're going to be unhappy. And so, as a as a business owner, if I have you as a as a client and you engage us and say, Dan, this is what we're looking for, maybe I have. You know, I have somebody working on it that that isn't the right fit, and I have to bring in somebody else, and I have to eat some of that money. I'm focused on giving you the result within the budget that we agreed upon. That's another big thing is saying, okay, what's the budget, and can I accomplish this within the budget? So it's it's being the three things I'd say are um, uh, delivering, being focused on delivering results being focused on uh, customer service um, and being professional. You know, and, and when somebody says, and, and I counsel a lot of former law enforcement that go, that go into the private sector, and what's, what's your elevator speech, right? Hi, um, hi Dan, uh, how are you? What, what, what do you do? Oh, I'm a retired detective and I have an investigations firm. The first thing I said is I'm retired. Why would somebody want to hire somebody who's retired looking for a retirement job? You know, that should not even be in your, your vocabulary. It should say, oh, I own an investigation firm. Oh, were you prior law enforcement? Yeah, yeah, a bunch of years. I did, did a lot of years in law enforcement, but now I have an investigations firm. So it's it's that mindset of, of not I'm retired and I'm looking to pick and choose and have a retirement job. It's saying, oh, what are you looking for? You know, I think I can help you. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I blogged about the three types of law enforcement uh, professionals that come out of public safety. One tier one would be people that got in and just washed out. It just wasn't for them. Tier two would be kind of mid career where you're at the top of your game, but you leave at mid career. That's what I did after 12 years. And the third would be the retired. 
you put in 20, 25 years, 30, 30 years, and you're retired and, and, you know, you're just doing your own thing. The point that you said, don't start a conversation. If you're trying to get clients, yeah, I'm a retired cop or retired because there's just, there's a connotation that you're just retired. You're just going to do the bare minimum, regardless if you do it or not. So coming in with, Hey, I own a, a, an investigative firm, a PI firm. Yes, I do have law enforcement background. You're you're selling yourself, and then also you're delivering. And that statement of work or scope of work, setting expectations are just crucial. Uh, so, so Dan, I mean, these these nuggets of wisdom is definitely going to help our listeners here that are on the fence of thinking of uh, going over to the private sector. What would you add to someone just coming into a firm like yours? Like, what what expectations would would you tell them uh, or any other large PI firm, because it's global, investigations are, are global. What, what what advice would you give someone that doesn't have the resolve or, or confidence to start their own business, but they want to work for a firm? What would make them successful? The um, the whole industry, and, and again, I like, uh, I like the question, um, the whole industry really revolves around um, subcontractors, the majority of the industry are um, sole proprietors, maybe a person and a partner, um, say 95% of the industry are individual PIs that, um, uh, that are running their own business, maybe, maybe out of their house even. And, and many of them have, have tremendous businesses. But as a result, and they can't do everything, they rely on subcontractors. So kind of different than what, what sometimes you'll see in law enforcement of the backstabbing and the competition. In, in the PI business that, that I'm in, we all rely on each other because there's plenty of business to go around. There's, there's millions of dollars in business out there that isn't being allotted to investigators. Uh, and I can, uh, I'll touch on that in a moment. And so uh, we rely on each other to uh, work as subcontractors, to get answers, to questions on how to do something. And so it, it is a really nice collegial environment that you can really depend upon other uh, investigators to assist you. So when somebody comes out of law enforcement and they come to me, I say, you know what, go get your, your PI license. You know, if you're willing to work, um, you can do work for a number of different investigators. Um, and then you've got, to, you've got to commercialize that skill. So if you say, okay, I want to do, there's always a lot of surveillance. Are you good at surveillance? Make sure you have a car that's that's good for surveillance. It doesn't have law enforcement plates. Uh, make sure you learn about uh, video cameras, covert cameras, how to convert the video to have time and date stamp on it. How are you going to share that with your um, uh, your investigator clients? You know, having all those things in place because a busy investigator will teach you but they want people that are experienced in that realm. Um, so no matter what, if you wanna come out and go into uh, an investigative firm or you don't wanna start something big, you've got to invest the time and some money into having your own business and learning about what it is you need to do and, uh, and putting those things in place. I, I'm glad you brought that up because the barrier to entry uh, as a PI could could be the cost of getting in. Uh, you're going to have to get one uh, register as a business, whether it's you know uh, S corp or LLC. You 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 hopefully want to stay away from like sole proprietorships from from liability perspective. But you need insurance, right? You got to ensure you have the right level of insurance. No one's going to hire you if you don't have uh, you know substantial insurance. And then. The tools, right, from computers to to high end camera equipment, or what would you say the minimum amount to just start your own PI firm in in I guess in the state of New Jersey or or, or any other state? What what would that number be? Just so if someone's listening to this, they they can have an idea that it's just not you're just not going to walk into it. Sure, sure, and and the thing is, if you're creative there's a lot that you can do on your own. For me, I started with $15,000. So I built the largest investigative firm in the state with a $15,000 investment. Wow. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't have to be 
a lot, but you do need to carve out some money and figure out where that money should go. So for me, I said, all right, well, what about computers? I've got to figure out you know, an email system and I've got to figure this out with computers. And so I taught myself, I took the time to learn what I needed to learn about computers without having to pay somebody. So there was a lot of things I, I did research on myself to, to learn um, because I couldn't afford to, to pay somebody for, for everything. But you do need to carve out some money, set some money aside and say, okay, I'm going to invest this money um, in, the, in the business. And, and there are, every state has a, a state private investigator association. And so joining them, reaching out, going to meetings, saying, hey, uh, I'm new here and you know, would anybody like to help me? We're, we're all willing to help a, a, a person getting out uh, on their own. The, the biggest thing that they do need to be prepared for financially is their phone may not ring very much for the first six months, year. And that's where the, the subcontractor work really comes in. You can hone your skills, you can learn the business, and you can go into to an investigative firm and say, listen, I'm trying to learn the business. You know, I'd like to help, you know, you pay me just a reasonable rate. Um, and, you know, it's great. I bring in guys and that want to learn the business and uh, and I'm able to get some really skilled guys uh, at a um, at a reasonable price, helping our profits, and then they're able to learn from me, um, you know, how to how to get set up on their own, and eventually they they can uh, be really successful on their own, and uh, and not have to learn the mistakes the, the hard way. Well, Dan, I really want to thank you for spending the time with us on Cop to Corporate helping other law enforcement professionals with uh, insights, and especially specific to the investigation discipline and the PI world. For uh, those of you that want to learn more about transitioning to the private sector, just to go to coptocorporate.com and follow me on social media. And once again, thank you, Dan. And until next time, Cop to Corporate uh, followers, see you later. Thank you, Brian.